Uh, so here alongside Nate Jackson, a Menlo College alum and NFL veteran who's here in promotion of his fantastic NFL memoir, Slow Getting Up. Nate, happy to have you back on campus today. Thank you. Happy to be here. Uh, so first, uh, tell us what year you graduated and what you majored in while you were at Menlo College. Uh, I graduated in 2002. Um, I majored in communications and uh, that was it. it was, uh, I transferred here from Cal Poly where I spent two years there, so I was here for three years and uh, graduated in 2002. And how would you say that Menlo has helped you in your career, both as a football player and now as an author? Well, Menlo um, gave me a lot of perspective on myself. And I, from coming from Cal Poly with 16,000 students, it was, a, it was a much different atmosphere and environment. And I came to Menlo, small classes, um, smaller campus. It allowed me to be myself. It allowed me to flourish. Um, as far as football, it gave me the opportunity to play, really. I had just been cut. Uh, from Cal Poly's team, and I came here not knowing if I could play football. I didn't have a lot of confidence, and um, this place gave me renewed confidence. I had coaches who believed in me. I got to catch the ball a lot. We threw the ball a lot as an offense. And then off the field, just uh, socially and academically, it had a similar effect. It was, um, like I said, the smaller classes held me more accountable as a student, allowed me to try new things. I was a communications major. I wrote for the school newspaper with really no journalism experience whatsoever, and um, our professor still let me do that, and I had freedom to write about whatever I wanted to write about, to explore my own thoughts and ideas, and um, you know, I think that was really invaluable for me um, going forward. What's your most memorable Menlo moment? Is there anything that most sticks out? Most memorable Menlo moment, well, the majority of them were football related because of uh, just the tight-knit group of the football players and teammates that we had here. We had just a, an amazing group of guys. And so the friends that I made here, um, some of the games, some of the away games that we had. I was talking about this earlier today. Probably my most memorable Menlo moment was a football game we played the week after 9-11 uh, at Humboldt State. Okay. There was a question of whether or not we were going to play at all because most of the games nationally were canceled. And um, our quarterback, Zamir Amin, was from Afghanistan. He was born in Afghanistan. His parents fled during the Soviet occupation. So uh, he was catching a lot of backlash that week. His family was being harassed. Their, um, their restaurant was vandalized. There was a lot of turmoil around that week. And we really rallied around not only him, but the whole Menlo community. Ended up playing, uh, rode our buses up there and beat them in a really crazy game. We were down 26-0 at the end of the third quarter. Came back and won in overtime. It was a very triumphant moment, uh, probably the best football game I've ever played in, really. Uh, so kind of shifting gears a little bit, what advice can you give to current students and alumni on a career path? Uh, my advice would be to trust your own ideas, to trust your own instincts, to uh, forge ahead, even when people tell you no, or people tell you that's uh, not a good idea, or you can't do it that way. Mm -hmm. What I learned from writing and what I learned from playing in the NFL was that a belief in yourself is really the only measuring stick that you should go by. If you believe that it's right, if you believe that you're right, then listen to that voice in your head. The voice in the head is never wrong. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't say yes if you mean no. Uh, do what feels right and believe in yourself. You've been very gracious with your time. You've been back a couple different times in promotion of the book. Um, what's it been like being back recently? It's really cool being back. Everyone's so nice here. And it it's brings back so many great memories. Um, it's like, you know, memories of simpler times when, um, I, I mean, I lived right, right there in El Camino Hall for three years, okay. in one of the tiny rooms for two years, then I got a big room at the end for the last year, and I just have a lot of really good memories about becoming a man here. I came here as a 19-year-old or a 20-year-old or whatever, and when I left, I really felt much more confident in everything that was going on football-wise and off the field, and so whenever I get a chance to come back, uh, I feel excited about it. Sure. Uh, so what's next on the horizon for you? More books in the future? Or you want to keep with the, the writing path? Yeah, I want to keep writing. It's something that <clears throat> um, if, when you're exploring create, the creative side or art in general, the more you do, the better you get at it. Mm -hmm. And you find a rhythm, and, but you've got to establish that rhythm and you have to do it a lot. And so it's only been, you know, I've been writing now full time for a couple, maybe three years. And I'm starting to hit a stride where I feel like I'm going to be doing my best work, and I just want to continue to push that and, and see where it goes. Perfect. Well, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate you being here today. Thank you, Aaron. Keep up the good work. Thank you.